It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gonna do it how you want it. Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, my dad. Walk on, man. Hey, man. I hope y'all ready, man. We got a special guest in here today, man. This man came a long ways, man. The man came down here to check me out, man. On Boss Talk 101, man. My boy Three Stripes in the building. What's going on, baby? Chillin', man. It's a pleasure to be here, man. Man, no, it's a pleasure to have you, man. Hey, man, I've been <laughs> checking you out, man. You doing your thing, man. I appreciate it, man. Man. So, uh, you know, we over here at Boss Talk 101, man, we get down a little different than everybody else, man. We always trying to figure out really what make you tick. You know what I'm saying? So when when, when we when we start to, well, I'm going to back up because, because I know somebody looking at me like they want to say something. I want to know where three stripes come from. That's what everybody um, be asking me. Yeah. Well, to like, make a long story short, when I was coming up, my dad always tried to make me be a, uh, a leader, not a follower. Everybody used to wear Jordans, and Jordans was like $200 a pair. My dad, he had money. He was driving trucks and stuff like that. But he, he just wanted me to be a leader. So the Adidas used to be like three for 90, and uh-huh. I just used to wear Adidas everything, and then everybody at school started calling me Three Scratch, and then I just ran with it. But they because called me Three for short because yeah. I didn't I never had no nickname. Okay. No, so once they started calling me three stripes, I just ran with it. People that my like close friends, they called me three for short. You know, it's come from wearing the Adidas, but I don't wear them no more. You don't wear them no more. Nah. With a name like that, you should wear it and and be the ambassador for. Adidas. I know, <laughs> like if I would have continued to wear it, right? Then nobody wouldn't be asking me why that why that why my name. They'll three still stripes. ask. They'll still ask because they'll see first, the stripes on me everywhere on the track suits. Yeah, yeah, you They'll right. Be like, oh. Yeah. Well, let me ask you something. Where's Moultrie at, man? Come on, tell me about Moultrie, Georgia. Man. Moultrie is uh, three hours away from Atlanta, 45 minutes away from Tallahassee, Florida. So it's in the country. It's like. It's in the country. You will not know where it's at. Like, you can't find it on the map. That's why I'm trying to put it on the map. Yeah, yeah. So and nobody's that, that uh, an artist or a football player. Or- uh, my uncle, which went to the NFL, he's from Moultrie. Then you got my cousin. Um, Shot Low, the late great Shot Low, his dad is from Moultrie. Shot Low was raised in. Um, he spent some time in Moultrie probably in his childhood, but he was raised in Atlanta. But his his roots is Moultrie. So in, in Moultrie, the the one who played football, your uncle, what was his name? His name was Antonio Edwards. Okay, okay. Moultrie is big on in football. Like we like number one in the nation. Like that's where you go if you want to play football at our high school. It's like like a. a um, you know that uh, TV show they got called I mean you know the movie they got called um, That be on Netflix and stuff like that Where Mocha, where I'm from is big 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 on football like It's like big a on half football. million dollar program So do you you feel like um, When you when, when you when, when you coming from Mocha you got something to prove Like I got so I got I to gotta let make these folks Understand what we doing down here Definitely definitely Yeah mm-hmm. I, I think that's the way I'd be Cause I'm from Lodi nigga you know what I'm talking you about? You don't know nothing about yeah, no yeah, that's what I'm talking about. about yeah, low I Texas, nigga. But I, I don't travel I'm from, a lot. I'm from Smithland, nigga. Yeah, so I get it because most people don't know where I'm from. Mm-hmm. So it's a small town. It don't even have many people as y'all's up to ten thousand. That's a big number. We only got one high school, one middle school. We don't have that. Oh. You see what they I'm saying? To, they go to the neighborhood. We go to we go to another oh. town to go to school. Oh, mm-hmm. that real, real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm country <laughs> man, down right by the Caddo Lake, though. But you know. uh when I look at uh, you know the music that's coming out of Florida, does that influence Moultrie? Cause y'all are real close to Florida. It don't influence me, cause I don't listen to nobody. You don't listen to nobody. I listen to myself. I listen to independent artists, like everybody that's trying to grind. I don't listen to major art. I feel like once a person feel like they become major and feel like they made it, mm-hmm. they don't put their hard work and effort and they and they rhymes. No so more. you tell me you don't listen to little baby. I, don't, I can't tell you. I can't you name. You don't listen Moneybag, yo. Man, I can't name Nan, Lil Baby song, or Moneybag, yo. I, if I hear it on the radio, I might hear a little bit of the hook, but I don't listen to them, boy. I don't you know, know their lyrics. But it's the same thing with sports. A lot of people always say that they be they don't want to watch like NBA, you know, pros. They prefer to watch college because they they, they just, trying to prove themselves. Right. I don't know no Drake or none are of that. Always better. Yeah. Like, yeah, but yeah. if I tell you my favorite rappers, you ain't gonna know who they is because they still independent. They on the ride. Name a couple. Name a yeah. couple. I want to hear it. Well, one of my favorite artists, um, 
it's gonna be real controversial. But you Go know, ahead. I like uh one uh, artist and I ain't no plug. I like him because he grinded. You know, why he, is it controversial? Because he's the dude that killed um Bank Road Fresh. Wow. Okay. Mm. So and that that make that don't make it controversial on your. You know, opinion. a lot of people gonna feel like I was I'm wrong for liking his for music. Like, but me, okay, but, that but, 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 but that's almost the same thing. Like some people say, you know, why like R. Kelly because of what he did. But R. That, Kelly, you I can't don't deny know if R. Kelly him. Did that. But you can't deny him because he's he's talented. Yeah, yeah. But I, like I said, if it wasn't your beef, okay. So now you got to pick a side. That how it is in society mm-hmm. nowadays. You know, like they say, um, it's another topic going on right now with uh, with uh, Quando Rondo. You know, I, Quan, I'm, you got well, a song I was, with Quando Rondo. Yeah, I got a song with him, and I was locked up with him. So I know him personally. I, I was locked up with him, Savannah, because I um I went to school there, or whatever. So people feel like I got to choose a side. But I like Lil Dirt. You know what I'm saying? I like when he first came out, and I like I like his music now. But I would talk to my cousin that day. He was like, "Bro, you gotta choose a side, bro. You can't ride with Dirt, them, bro. It's, it's Georgia against Chicago now." I'm like, "Bro, you know." Yeah, what but I'm you saying? still like Dirt. Yeah, I still like Dirt though. But you know, I, th- it's sad that you have to pick a side, bro. I don't like that, man. I don't like because that's, that that's not real. I just seen the interview the other day. Twenty One Savage did with uh, he did with the dude that um that always. I forgot his name. He's from Chicago. But 21 Savage was talking about how everybody had to choose a certain rapper side because of something. I forgot, man. I be, I be looking on different different blog sites and me saying stuff, but I don't really get into that mainstream stuff. Yeah, it's crazy, man, because a lot of it, it changes, don't it, when you, whether you be, uh, whether you, you um, it, it really changes if you if you really think about it. Mainstream versus independent grind is so different, and it changes. So you got to be careful how you tread when you're dealing with this stuff, right? Because yeah, yeah. I know for a fact, man, uh, a lot of people ain't even. Hey, man, hey, man, them, them independent artists don't get to shine, but some of them harder than anything. Yeah, that's for co- real. Most of it always been like that. Yeah, it do. The underground always been. That's why I'm a UGK fan. You in Texas, nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Because they stayed underground. They didn't want to be But commercial. UGK is always big, though. Yeah, but they still stayed underground. They don't, They didn't want to be mainstream. That's why they didn't certain, move certain ways. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of rappers went commercial, and you can tell. Like, now nobody don't really show no support, you know? But it's, you got to, like, a lot of people feel like Lil Baby went commercial, you know? But he one of them rappers. He still feel like he got something to prove. Like, if you go to Atlanta and go to Lil Kelly right now, you'll see, you probably see Lil Baby still in his hood. For sure. But a lot of, yeah. I know that personally because me and him deal with some of the same people. But um, you'll still see him in the hood, like, in his Lambo truck, still in his hood. Like, giving away clothes and shoes. But people feeling like, Lil Baby, bro, he got too much money. But he got... He got this thing in his mind. He's just like he ain't living in the hood. Like he's still being the hood right now. If he right got a show, if he got a show in Atlanta tonight, you'll see him right there in Oak City, right there in Zone Four. So he ain't gonna leave. Nah, he ain't gonna leave. Ain't nobody gonna touch him either. Like and you go in his hood, it's like it's like an army base. You like got young niggas everywhere scrapped up, ready. Like if the car, they don't if they don't recognize the car, your car might get shot up. They ain't playing over there in Oak City. For real? Dang, man. So, so how how different is that from Moultrie? Nigga? Like, like where you niggas at? in Moultrie, niggas in Moultrie, they gonna be it be the niggas in your circle be one kill you. <laughs> so every car come through, they looking for the nigga they know. Man, it's in Moultrie, man. You need be you get a list of says they hating on you soon. You, I swear, man. But let I, me. Oh, I, go ahead. My bad. Look, um, my blog site had posted um a blog site posted about me a couple months ago talking about how much money I made off my royalties. It um. Off my um, music royalties And some niggas That don't like me They went to sharing The blog Talking about Yeah but this music Still whack I'm like Bro why would you even sh- I mean yeah. You started giving me My credit but Why Why would you share my This this post Talking about my music Is whack But I still made All this money Off my music Like niggas be hating Like they want to get Some fame so bad But yeah. but you gonna have To have that man You you, you it's, And it's gonna It's gonna It's gonna Evolve yeah. as you grow, your haters gonna grow just like your fans. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had to learn. I had to learn because nigga be ready to come in on my post and I get active when I know I'm active. Like, if I leave from Texas right now, I leave from Florida, I go back to Motion, I be riding around my window down and everything because nigga be talking about I don't be in the city. I, <laughs> what's up? Then, oh, bro, you came when I went down. Like, man, I, I do that sometimes because I need to start doing that though because I be feeling like cause niggas are always talking about, oh, 
Yeah, bro, you went Hollywood. How you going? I got my album. I get ready to drop King of Motor Three. Mm -hmm. So I got a tattoo on my in, in the middle of my chest. Niggas talking about I'm not a King of Motor. When you, if you mention Motor music, you ain't gonna know nobody but me. Mm. So that's why I say I'm the king. I ain't saying I'm the king. Well, can't nobody do that right. unless it go through me. I'm just saying as far as music, I'm the king mm -hmm. of Mo King mm -hmm. Motor. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing. Um, you were raised with your mom and dad. Um, I raised my mom and my dad. My dad went to the feds like two months after I was born. So mm. How long got, was he there for? He got out when I was five. Okay, so. He went to the feds, did five years. Mm -hmm. He got out. Instead of him selling drugs, he started um, driving trucks. Oh, that's my, cool. So my dad started a truck driving company, Emmerard Trucking, and he been driving like 25 years. And, and, um, no, no, not 25 years, like 20 years. And he came to me like two months ago because he getting older and – um. He got a sickness where he'll just fall asleep in the middle of a conversation. Mm, I, yeah, I heard of that. And um, he get ready to go but to the doctor. he don't drive no more. He don't want to go to the doctor to get checked. Like, he he know he know he's sick, but he don't want to go to the doctor because he know they're going to tell him to stop getting out. Right, he, he you can't drive. Yeah, you can't so, drive with that. What he telling me was, he be like, son, I got two other brothers. My One, one of my brothers, 32, and I got a little brother, like seven. He was like, son, I want to pass on the truck and bend it to you. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to do that. <laughs> I don't even like you the You can drive. control the truck and hire somebody to be in there. You yeah, don't have to be in there. That's what I do. You know but what I mean? But he want me to drive, though. Because every, oh, yeah. well, get your CDL and just get somebody else to be in there. I ain't even trying to do that. I barely can park a car. I'm parking <laughs> in my truck. So uh, I, it, you got to have a car down there where you from. I do. I can't parallel but park. But you can't like parallel it, park. <laughs> How you pass your, 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 your if I got, If I see... Um, How you pass your test? Oh, the lady didn't even make me parallel park. When I um, <laughs> when the parallel parking park came up, I said, I can't do it. She was like, don't even worry about it. And she still passed you? Yeah, she still gave me like an eight or nine. <laughs> she was only worrying about the road test. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So let me ask you, do you do you feel like the music uh, is influenced by Atlanta? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm talking about in Moultrie. Yeah. I'm trying to make it influenced by something. Everybody, when they get their music, they try to go to Atlanta. You know, but I did different. I went to Miami. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So let me ask you this: uh, Kodak Black down in Miami. He in um, Broward. Oh, okay. Is he? How's How's he when you when you look at his music? And what do you think about that? Because he's Kodak he's Black is another little baby. He's another little baby. He in his hood. He always in the hood when he ain't got. That's why he stay in jail. But see, little baby don't. Lil Baby got a million youngins around here. They're going to take charge. Like, you'll see Lil Baby youngins going in and out of prison because they, they ain't letting Lil Baby go to jail. So they got, it. they got him like that. And that nigga must be really stumped man, down. He's going to make sure they straight. The man, man, I know, I know two, three of Lil Baby homeboys. Every one of them had iPhones in prison. All of them. All of them. And get what? When them boys get, them boy get everything they want into the prison, all they got to do is get on FaceTime with Lil Baby. The guard going to let them get everything in it. Man, wow. I seen... Oh, um, one on uh, you know, I ain't want I don't want to throw a name out there, but when he was in prison, man, that man had like five thousand dollar cash on him in his in the cell with an iPhone. Hmm. Keep it on him. Yeah. Don't they search these cells? Yeah, but you know, yeah, man, I'm talking about man. These niggas. Anybody can be bought. They be. Um, you got to yeah. think about it. If a lady she making nine ten dollars an hour, and she would pay a hundred some dollars to see little baby at a concert, and she get to see him for free on Facetime. She gonna risk her whole. <laughs> she risking it all for that. She gonna man. risk it all. So when you brought up, do you want to go? Yes, okay. I got. Um, what is that emblem on your necklace? It's a handicap. Um, that's no. what I thought. I'm like, so stand for Crip Community Revolution and Progress. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That like, young why boy, you yeah. Have a yeah, Community I'm Revolution and Progress. Is that what he said? In, in when we was interviewing, uh. Um, uh, 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 I know who you're talking about. Payback. Payback. Mm, Did, is so. that what he said? Yes. So, yeah, I'm trying to understand. That's the I acronym saw the emblem he used. And I'm like, I noticed a handicap sign. I'm like, <laughs> you like, why was somebody yeah. wanting to be handicapped? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so do you think, what, what was I about to ask him anyway about the, uh, I think I was going to ask you about um, Blue Acorn. What, what, what's up? What, what influenced that? Um, Blue Acorn. I can't really go into the details of that. Well, why in the hell you put an album out with Blue Acorn if you ain't going to tell me about okay, it? Okay, the reason why I named You're it... The, <laughs> look, the reason why I named the Blue Acorn, because um, I'm a squirrel trying to get a nut. 
Okay. In, in the rap game, I'm a scrub. I do. I came. I want a scrub trying to get a nut. I like the color blue. And one of my favorite rappers, he's not mainstream. It's Pee Wee Longway. He got hey, the blue M and M. Shout out Pee Wee Longway. That's so, a that's a real one. Yeah. So I didn't. I named mine the, the Blue Acorn. You know. Dope man, dope. Do I got it tatted on me right here, on my wrist. So, mm-hmm. so what what influenced you to be uh, a crib? Um. And how old my were you daddy, when you got your into Your daddy was gripping? Nah, my daddy, he ain't he affiliated with nothing, but my dad always told me to be a leader. So all my homeboys are bloods. So I was, I was raised to be different, so I became mm-hmm. a crip. Man. And Moultrie, I, I say it in my songs all the time. All my niggas are banging red, but we chasing the green. I'm the only crip in my organization. And y'all friends with them. Because yeah. I always thought when you blood and crip, you're not supposed to be friends with each other. You're supposed to be like enemies. Nah, that ain't how it started out. In the beginning... In California, mm-hmm. Bloods and Crips started out to go against the police. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like it's, it was a branch off the Black Panthers. You know so that's but, the same thing Payback said, but somebody else said something different. You got you get you fake OG. These folk begin fake history. They don't be going to the land and, and talking. Mm-hmm. But okay, Crip started and then they started Blood because you know anything, you start anything. You mm-hmm. always gonna have somebody hating and try to start something to be in competition with. So Crip mm-hmm. was the for the first. Um, the first organization, you know, mm-hmm. and then it became blood, and then they went against each other. But you got Crips that go against each other. You got you got sick, you got Sloss and Al right here, and you got Hoover Street, and they rivals, and they killing each other. Mm-hmm. And then you got Eighty uh, Third Street, which is A Trey Gangster Crips. They all like that's how it is in Cali. Every, all the enemies is one street up. apart from each other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was out there in Cali about six months ago, and I was out there at Nipsey's store. And one of my OG would told me like, man, it ain't safe. It ain't safe over here, three man. You better go on, go, go go about your business, cause all the the um the Hoover Chris would just come and shoot up the store, mm. like killing innocent people. You know, people How like to go out there. How long ago was that? It was about six months to a year ago. They closed out. They got they got Nipsey store blocked off now, right? Cause people going out there and just take pictures, but they were getting shot up and stuff. Out uh, there trying to just wear stuff like the wrong color. Wow. Trying to show love to Nipsey, and then mm. you know we got gamers. See, in, in, out, there in, out there in Cali, you got the 60s, they were they were royal blue. The Hoovers, they were orange. So if the, if the Hoovers roll up on the 60s and they see you wearing that royal blue, you might be trying to pay homage to Nipsey. You might have on a Marathon Continues jacket. They think you one of the 60s and they're going mm, they mm-hmm. to shoot at you. Well, let me ask you this. Um, you, um, you was, you. Oh, she you, had me when I became Crip. Yeah, I actually. I man. became Crip. Um, I was like, uh, it was right after I got out of jail for, um, well, right after I got out of jail, I became a crook. I and didn't, how old were you? I was 18. Okay, so you started late because when I think about those gangs, I think about them recruiting kids, like yeah. real young. They so, tried to recruit me as a kid, but the um, only reason I didn't was because my dad was on me heavy. When I went to jail, they keep on telling me I had to make a choice, but I was like, I'm not finna join in jail because then it gonna make it seem like I joined the gang for protection. So when I okay. got out, I made my decision because when you join a gang in jail, you have to rejoin on the street because oh really? I mean, a lot of a lot of people they okay they are join crip because they was in the dorm with number, I mean because they was in the dorm with number of crips, but then when they get on the street where they from, it's number of blood, so they might try change over. So you not you not official until you. Re get re get jumped in or re enlist on the street. And so. is there a reason why you pick Crips over Blood other than your friends? Oh, I just picked to be different. Just to be different. Cause that, I was, want, that was it. Yeah, I always had to be different than them. Okay, and I know that you had gotten into trouble. Um, I was about to ask school that. School so you school must you be sliding <laughs> right here on right right here on the damn podcast. Just, <laughs> Let me get that one in because I know he was going to ask. It that was one. in my mind to ask a long time ago. So, so go was, ahead. What was it at? What be school quiet. was it? Yeah, be that's quiet. what I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do your research. Yeah, get on back. So in Savannah, man, when this thing went down, Georgia, what what happened on the shooting? How did that happen? Why would you get caught up in a school shooting? Man, um, what happened was it was a lot going on there at school and. My, I had a whole bunch of homeboys. They was real scary. I did one of my homeboys from my hood. It was some of my homeboys from school. Mm-hmm. We all went to the same college together. They were scary. They were like, three man, you got to get some protection. So I went home the week before. I was at school about a week. And how I old were you at I, this time? I was 18. Oh, 18. Because after I got out of jail from that, then I became a crook. Right. 
But the dude I shot was a blood anyway, so I felt like I couldn't join blood because mm-hmm. I shot a blood, mm-hmm. you know. So I felt like I wanted to run past with him one day. But um, so I got, I went home and got a gun, bought off one of my uh, OGs in the hood for like thirty dollars. He gave me a box of bullets and all. He like, oh, he'll give up with the whole package. Yeah, deal. he gave me a whole package. So deal. hold on, yeah, so you he gave this, that nigga a starter pack. Yeah, he gave so me you got right. this gun because you were being bullied because they were. No, what happened was Savannah State had a low security. Like they was people were jumping the camp, jumping the fence, robbing people. People began like people began robbed on the campus. Then I had a big name coming. I was I had them just hit world star. Mm-hmm. I was a known rapper at the school. Okay. So everybody knew me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I know I'm rapping about all this stuff, having all this money. Somebody gonna try to try me. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know the dude was gonna try to hate on me. What well, the dude was hating on me? Cause he had already had to pick me out. Like he had been going at me on Twitter, but I had so many messages and stuff. You I really got, got lost in the sauce. Yeah. So, um. But you've never had a physical altercation with him before this? Nah, never okay. had a physical altercation. He hit me up on Instagram or whatever, talking about what he gonna do to me, this and that. And then we got me out of the case. I told him, I said, hey, bro, I don't know you. I don't want no, I don't want no beef with you, bro. I said, I don't. So they went back and found that. Yeah, I screamed. When I turned myself in, they yeah. had them got, um, they had them brought the, the, uh, the, the marshals, the U.S. marshals and stuff like that. Let me tell you how it happened. After I shot him, I had on here. I was hiding out about three, four hours. And this is inside the school. Yeah, it was on top. Nobody else got shot. Nah, I only shot him. Okay. But it was dudes with him. But I only shot him though. Okay. Um, I was hiding out about three, four hours. So I was listening. I was watching the news. Me and my me and the scary homeboys. <laughs> um, I was watching the news and they they had we were listening to the um the description of the shooter they had. They were like he was tall, short hair. At the time I had dread. I'm like yeah, I'm good. So like 30 minutes later come by, my mama called me. She like, da, 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 they said you did a shooting it. I'm like, oh man, it's over with. Once they called my mama, I'm like, somebody done told. I shot them in front of 20 people, but I thought everybody was gonna keep it real because they was they had been waiting on me outside my house. You feel me? I was staying in an apartment on campus. I shouldn't, they shouldn't have put me in apartments. If they'd put me in the freshman dorms, I probably would never shot them. They put me in the, in the apartments with the older people. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when I get home, these folks just waiting outside my house. I'm trying to walk to my door, bro. Like, you ain't going nowhere. I'm like, hey, bro, get out my way. So he hit me. They started jumping me. I fell to the ground. He didn't know I had a gun on me. And then I just, bah, 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 bah. and then I ran into my room, got my bullets, got rid of them. I turned myself in late on that night. And then I sat in there for like a month. But I had before I took myself in, I screenshot everything, gave it to my lawyer. I sat in the jail for about two months. And then that's when my self defense case started coming. They lock him up. He came in the dorm in a wheelchair. He was in a wheelchair for a minute. I don't know if he's still in the oh, wheelchair. Oh, you seen the nigga? Yeah, I seen him. But they had separated us though. They separated us. He came in on the wheelchair. Um then they let me out. They let me out on a thousand dollar bun. He got dra- he dropped that bun. They want that yeah, money. They now. let me out on a thousand dollar bun. I fought that case on the street for three years. They were trying to wait on me to get into some more trouble. How and did this affect your mom during the beginning stage of it when she first heard that you did that and that it happened? How did how was her reaction and how how was she? I don't really know. You have to ask her, but she, you know my mom was a school teacher, so mm-hmm. everybody was looking at her crazy like you were here at school telling us to do all this and that, and then your son at school shooting people. You know, mm-hmm. but I had, I can't go into my past, but I had them. That wasn't nothing new to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah. my first time yeah. getting caught. You yeah, know? That, that's the way it usually be. Yeah. That's the way it usually be. So we had a, a, a shooting here just, just last week. Right. And yeah. Did you hear about it on the news? Yeah, I told you I heard about it because okay. I seen a blog site posting my, he was the first, he the first black school shooter in history. And then a lot of people that know me tagged me and they're like, nah, y'all got it wrong. Three strike the first one. But I wasn't even the first one. My homeboy was the first no, one. No, he wasn't even the first one. My I'm cousin was the first one. <laughs> oh, so I... Uh, yeah, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a long yeah. list. Yeah, I'm my sure there was somebody was before one. him. You think I so? I guarantee no. you. If you do your research... No, my cousin well, did the first. the first one in Georgia. And I'm not well, saying that this is a good thing. He was the first one in Texas. <laughs> and I'm not saying that this is a good thing, you know, for anybody to do in school because anything could happen to anybody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So how do you feel about the shooting that happened here in Texas? Do you feel like... He should have went and got his gun and that should have happened? Or do you feel that since you went through it? Because this boy was being bullied. Oh, so yeah. this wasn't a first time altercation like you. That was your first running with him physically. He had been in a fight. 
he um, was being bullied by this kid and he just probably just couldn't take it. And did you see the footage of the fight? No, I didn't see. All I seen was like a screenshot and he was like, yeah, at, at school it's going down today. No, there was a fight with him and that young, you know, the boy who, who he shot. And he he got beat up, like, mm, really bad. See that. Right. And then he went and got a gun and he shot him and stuff like that. So See, that ain't self defense though. I don't know about Texas laws, though. See, you got in Georgia, you got to shoot them in the same. In the action, yeah, in right. The action. Because that's that's what I'm thinking. Premeditated. That's premeditated. That's exactly what he I was thinking. He went home and about. thought he about went, it. He could have told himself, nah, I ain't going to shoot him. He went and got him. it. I'm going to shoot him. Nah, I, I don't know him. if he if he got the gun, like if he had the gun in his bag and he left, because it's still sketchy a little bit, because I read in the news. So I'm not sure if he went and got the gun and then um, came back, not came back to the school, but you know, his backpack is there and then shot him. That's normal. He didn't in have Texas. it on him. He didn't have it on him. That's normal in Texas. I, I told you, I just talked to a young dude the other day, stay in Houston. He said everybody at school had their guns on them. I'm like, what? He, t- he was telling me, he was like, bro, he just shot somebody at his school. Hmm. And he was like, bro, at our school, bro, everybody be scrapped. I'm like, bro, what? Because I know Texas is open carry. I mean, anybody can have a gun, but you still have to be over 21 to have a gun. Oh. You understand what I mean? To be able to carry it on you openly like that. You still have to have be 21 to do that. Well, if you're a convicted felon, you can't carry it Mm-mm. at all, No. Oh. Mm-mm. So, because I was saying that, you know, that boy being bullied, he needed to beat him up. And the teachers knew that they were having altercations. He, the yeah. principal knew. So. I ain't just going to take his side. I'm not condoning. Right. I'm not condoning that. He. Go take some classes of yeah, self man, defense like and then come back and beat him up. I feel like he should have at least got him a group of homeboys or something. Something like, like that. Because you messed in your dude? life. No. He was in surgery. He had four shots one in his leg, one in his stomach, and two in his shoulders. Oh. So, you know, they showed all of that. The parents were talking about they all of that. They ain't going to play with him. They might try to do him like they did take K. Probably. I don't know yet. I know he's out on bond. Yeah, I seen it. They had a um, they had a, um, <laughs> a, a celebration for him, a party. They had a welcome home party for him. He went, he going viral. He, he going is. up. Like my, I tell you, mine went viral. I was on the interview. I did an interview in Atlanta, and somebody picked up a clip of mine and it went viral. People felt like I was bragging about it, but mm-hmm. that's the case that I'm telling you about. Like, we talking about that's seven years old. I'm 25 now. Mm. You no, know, I wasn't able to talk about it for like three, four years. Mm-hmm. Now nah, I can. Mm. Uh, I'm, you know, it's you so be, because I feel that a lot of kids, because you know, they always talk about cyberbullying and so, so forth, and a lot of kids are feeling like they got to go get a gun and you know react to their situation. Yeah, because music. Well, but, I'm gonna tell you the reason why I did my school shooting because mm-hmm. of music. I had been listening to none but Lil Durk and Chief Keith, and my mind just was on straight drilling. I swear mm. that when I, I swear I ain't just trying to blame it on them boys, but that music do make a right do ha- make a big difference in your actions. Cause I had been listening to none but drill music, mm-hmm. and I felt like I was one of them. So with saying that, how do you make your music different that it don't do that to little kids as well? Well, the music I make, I don't be making music about shooting people. Mm-hmm. I make music about hustling, trying to get some money, living. You know, shoot them if you got to. But I ain't just. <laughs> he said shoot them if you have to. Yeah, but the thing is, after you go through what you went through shooting, like at the school, it's basically uh, something to where you don't play with it. You know what I'm saying? And see, with me going through that, it it, it's, it kind of was a good thing and a bad thing. See, now, like, niggas know I don't got locked up for shooting somebody. I have to watch what I do because a nigga ain't going to try to come at me like they would the average person. Like, a nigga ain't going to try to fight me. Nigga going to try to shoot me because he like, oh, y'all three going to get me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to have to, I'll, like, I have to try to be out of situation. Like, when I get into a nigga, nigga be like, oh, yeah, I already know three going to pop me. So I can't, you know. Yeah, no, I get it. But that's why I w- when I was asking that question, I was trying to figure out how could you use what your situation is to turn it to good, meaning, like, to try to help. Talk to some of these young Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My you know mama, what I mean? My mama uh, setting up a couple things. I'm giving back to my uh, community, and I'm going to the elementary talking. Right. And um, I've been trying to get together today. To um, I looked at my phone when I was just signing that paper. Mm-hmm. Today makes 10 years since my best friend got killed. Um, um, His dad came home and went through his wife's phone, went through my, my homeboy mama's phone, and found out she was cheating on him. 
And um, he killed my best friend. He killed his little brother. He killed himself. So they made ten years. Wow. And um, that's in Moultrie. Yeah, in Moultrie. Wow. Um, like that John Jeff crazy man. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy because man, when something like that happens, you don't even expect it to see it coming. You know what I mean? Yeah, I ain't even expect it. You wouldn't expect it. You know that you never can, and you try to figure those things out, and you try to put two and two together, but it never come up for. You never, you never can figure that part out. Like, what the heck? What was, you know what I mean? But you know, people just react when they're going through something. They think about something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't even he think tried about to kill it. her too, but she got away. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, nigga just react, bro. And you, and, and it's, it's done just that fast. Um, <clears throat> so, top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any genre. Um, Number one. I don't even know. I grew up listening to Tupac. I had okay, no choice but okay. listen to him because my mom was a big fan of him. It's okay. But I don't really know a lot of songs. How you, how you gonna say that's your number one? I, I don't want, I don't want nobody that you don't really listen to. It could be the people that you say that you mess with right now that, that are nobody know, right? right. It yeah. can be anybody that you Your love number one. Their music. I have to look through my music thing. <laughs> no, come on. We need a top three. Because I ain't really been listening to nobody lately. But just, who do you, who do you, well, just overall. So you say Tupac is number one. Tupac, number, number one. Number two. Any genre. Um, Lil Wayne. Okay. I used to listen to him when I was young. A lot of people did. Yeah. Yeah, um, Number three. Uh, I don't know, man. Number three. Myself. All right. Okay, you can I like that. that. I like that. I that, that. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with I that. I don't be listening to these folk, man. See, a lot of people do Tupac and Michael Jackson. No, nah, Michael Jackson, he was a singer. Like... <laughs> no, so but it's it, it any genre. genre. Oh, JB Sands start just making sound <laughs> no. good. I mean, I really shouldn't even say it. Tupac, that was the first thing that came to my head. I really shouldn't have said, said you me, know, me, and, and me. me. <laughs> we had that the other day, didn't we? Yeah, but we didn't, we didn't accept let it. Do it. We didn't yeah. let them do it. Yeah. So when you go like right now in the music scene. Um, a lot of people they they point this music thing around, but uh, it's a lot of youngsters ain't really getting money doing this right now. They putting up money, which that make them bosses. I ain't tripping on that. They doing it so they they make you a boss because you putting your money up for what you believe in. But how do you how do you rectify that, and how do you figure out a way to turn it to ROI so you can benefit off the music? Well, you know, I, I do a lot of research. I ain't I ain't stupid. I I made two hundred thousand dollars off my music. Really? Yeah, I done made two hundred thousand dollars. I've been rapping since Over I was thirteen. Yeah, you I Over seen what? that. I seen it yeah. when I looked you up. Since I was, since I've been rapping since I was thirteen. You know, I find out how to get paid for all my everything, monetize everything on YouTube. When I started out, I was filming. I got um, two movies. I get I monetize my movie. All my all my music monetize. Like when I get it, when people um, play it on Instagram, Facebook, advertising all that stuff. I find out how to do all that. When I was like. When I was like, when I dropped my first movie, I was like 14 years old. I walked around the hood and sold a thousand copies for ten dollars. Wow, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that's what's that's good right there. Yeah, so, so, money. so, so no, you, but the two hundred thousand that you're talking about that you made is that from off the, of royalties? Off of royalties from oh, in twelve years. In twelve when, years. When you okay. when you look at it, it's like twenty thousand dollars a year. But I'm from Motri, you know. Mm. That's Small. a lot of money. That's a big money in Motri. Yeah. 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 So, so what movies? Let's talk about the movies. My first movie I did it was like forty-five minutes long. I, I filmed it, directed it. It's called The Come Up. You I filmed it and directed. You did yeah. everything. It got like probably like three hundred thousand views on it. Wow. I filmed it. I read. I edited it and everything. It took me like a month to render it. I edited it. My second movie I did on my case, the one in Savannah. Yeah. Mm. But it didn't get that much. On the shooting. Yeah, I did a move on the shooting, and then I'm gonna do a third movie on the last case I caught. It's called Crash Out Season. So my brother had got robbed, and I, my mama had on call me. She like she wanted me to go do something to the people that robbed my brother. So I jumped in the car, and I was speeding on the way to Motri, and I got pulled over, and I had a warrant for my arrest. I sat sit down for nine months, and whole a whole lot of stuff just happened while I was in jail that time. Wow. What inspired you to start doing movies? movies? I just used to be on YouTube. Like I tell people all the time, People be talking about they don't know how to do nothing. Like I don't, I don't smoke. I don't know how to roll no blunt because I ain't never put my head, put my mind to it. So I, I always was big on YouTube. Like Soulja Boy, not one of my favorite rappers, but he, he was a big yeah. influence. Yeah, nigga, yeah he, he pretty he sharp the show, He the one show people like people don't pay attention to him. That boy, that he he real He's good smart. at marketing. Mm -hmm. So I was just like I used to see people that got their own little independent movies on YouTube, and my mama had my mom and dad about it was like. I was probably like 13 years old. I told my mama, to, instead of some shoes and clothes, I, was like, I want a camera. I had got a Canon T2i. 
And my mom would like, my dad would like, he want a camera? What do you want a camera for? I started shooting videos, doing photography, and I shot me a movie. And then that, when I when I had started capping all that, making all that money, then that was my dad to start believing. He was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> was like, man, that's dope, man. I made so much money. I'm, I like I've been getting hated on in school for a long time because I had more money than all of them. Yeah. I like yeah. the fact that you were young and you took that initiative to do all of that and you had that drive for it. Because a lot of times kids, they want something, start with it, and then just put it down. And a lot of people don't believe it. in themselves. I know I'm from a small town, but I feel like I can do anything I put my, my mind to. Where you get that from, your mom or dad? Your mom? My dad. Your dad? And my dad, um, when my dad was coming up, he was like five, no, my dad was like eight years old. And um, my, he was raised by my grandma. My granddad lived in New York. My grandma had went to prison for murder. She had stabbed the lady like a hundred times. So she went to prison wow. for like eight years. My daddy got sent in New York and he got raised by my granddaddy. So my granddaddy made him get out and hustle and start and just and explore. So my mm-hmm. daddy put that in us, like the hustle that he got from being in New York, he put in us. My dad, I, he had money coming up, but he made us work for everything. Like wow. he, he never just give us nothing. Like he like, Yo, okay, just cause I got it, don't mean you got it. And we always had to work. We was selling five words. We were doing whatever. We were raking yards, whatever. Like that's why I thank my dad for everything he taught us, cause he taught us the value of a dollar. You know, that's that, that's, that and that's he very just, important. He ain't just spoon feed us, you know. Yeah. So when when you look at uh, just what your dad taught you, you feel like if it hadn't been for him, you wouldn't be in the situation you are now. I can't get him all the credit though, my, cause my mom was the first one that believed in me. Okay. And my dad, he ain't believed in me till everybody else started believing in me. So family is important. Yeah. You got to get like that. that. I like family that. very important. But you know what? It's called balance. The female gives you some stuff and the man gives you some. I wish I could bring my dad on the show, man. And my dad, he ended up, he ended up, uh, I ended up talking to him one, it was probably like five, six months ago. It was at my, it was at my nephew's birthday party. And he had, uh, he had been hearing in the street that I was making a lot of money. And I had him told him how much money I had them made in that month. And he was like, he like, well, let me hold some. I like, what you need? <laughs> he asked me for thirty eight thousand dollars, and I told him, I like, well, let go. I will go get it for you. He like, what? And I went, and I get, and I went to the, I went to where I had the money hid, and I gave it to him. Wow, that's dope, right and there. I, and and, that, and he was right here, here to tell you. Yeah, we need well, to bring him on the show. My, that's he dope. He tell all his friends all the time. He like, boy, this, I, he told my mom the other day when I had my country video. He like, boy. I'm so he said he said I'm so glad I he said I'm so glad for that one right there. Well, my mama and my daddy got three kids together. He was like, man, I worked hard on that one right there. Cause my my he don't get it he don't he don't get along with my big brother and my sister. I was yeah. just about to ask you because the fact that he said that, I was wondering how was his. Well, if you give me thirty eight thousand, it's gonna it's gonna weigh a, a little bit different yeah, than the other because that's and for you to get it on on your own like right. that and give it to him. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah. Some people try to buy their parents a house or something like that. I bought my mama a house. I paid That's my dope. mama house off. Yeah, but I try to get her moved to Atlanta because I got a lot of ops in my hometown, but she don't want to leave. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And how old are you again? 25. Yeah. Oh, man. That's dope, man. That's dope. That's, that's why I, when I when I seen you, when me and you talked, I knew I had to get you on the show because I'm like, that young dude right there, he making moves. He ain't trying to hear it. Two, three he ain't months nothing out, holding back. I'm going to be so icy. I got so much jury on the way. <laughs> For real, I got a jewel out there in Houston making my three scratch chain, and then I got my wind up beat chain on the way. Jewel and Atlanta just hit me up before I got here. I'm finna go pick that up. I What's got, up with the and book? No kids. Um, I'm waiting. I'm trying to find. Now nah, I don't got no kids. Wow. Um, on I'm, the book. I'm I'm trying to wait. I'm trying to find a writer. Okay. Cause I can, you know, I could talk. I need somebody that I can sit and talk to, and for them to write it. Mm-hmm. Cause I had them wrote the movie already in jail, so I got the movie I already wrote. We just finna start filming. We finna do a casting call, but I need to find me a writer because I know how to publish them. I might can help you with that. I know, boy, that he deals with movies a lot. I'm a, and he, they done wrote a couple of books. I'm gonna do the book and I'm gonna give out like probably like twenty copies to each prison in the state of Georgia because I want to show all the young men that's in the, that's in Georgia Department of Corrections that um, just keep your head up. You can make it out of any situation. You know what I'm saying? Just because you, you know, I know I got friends. I got homeboys that got life that went to trial and ended up getting life sentences. They did seven years, came up for appeal, and came home. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Just keeping faith, staying in that law book, it just staying positive. You know, when I, like I said, when I, when I caught the case, I caught everybody at my age group. They was like, "Yeah, it's over for three. And it, and it wasn't. And yeah, and it wasn't. You know. Yeah. So yeah. now they look at me. Like I said, I went viral on TikTok. 
people coming on to my, oh, he's a snitch, this and that. How I snitched? I, if I went down on the case by myself, I ain't mm-hmm. had no code offenders. I had 20 witnesses against me. But I didn't have no code offenders. Wow. Know? That's crazy, man. So when I turned myself in, my little homeboy that with me, I said, nah, bro, y'all boys stay in here, bro. I'm finna go down here by myself. Yeah. I don't need these folk tricking y'all, none of that, you know? Yeah, I see the people that you was working with years ago, three, you say three years ago, you're not working with them anymore as far as on the videos, the features, and all those guys. Um, Because the music, like, is changing, of course, it's going to Because I'm focusing on myself because at first I was trying to ride a little feature way. But then all these rappers, they want to be Hollywood, man. These folks, you, you pay them for a feature, they don't even want to post it. So I feel like I'm going to build, build my own stuff up. They do not want to post That's it. You're right about that. Yeah, and they be acting like they ain't obligated to. I be like, man, nigga, you act like you ain't, you ain't never up and coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then you done songs with Quando Rondo. You've done songs with a lot of known artists. Yeah, Jose Guapo. Jose Guapo. Jose, Jose posted it. Jose came down the motion for the video. No, nah, I can't speak on... Now, Quando, he went Hollywood. Me and Quando was in this, we was in the same dorm together. When Quando came up with that song, I remember I was in the same dorm with him. I was two, I was two, two, um, two cells down from him. He was being on the cell, right? Coming up with that song. When he got out, he got out for me. He was sitting on the car. Yeah, how he went viral. He was sitting on the car, being, saying that I remember and telling everybody to spam NBA Youngboy. NBA Youngboy signed him. That's how he blew. Wow. You know I mean? So how far you think you away from just, just for, from blowing? And will you will you ever sign or will you remain independent? Nah, I don't feel like I ever sign. Cause I done seen more money than a lot of these folk done seen without a deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know? I know. Yeah, yeah. You, you seem like you you can you can take it on, man. Building your own team out. Yeah, and just you know. I'm just waiting on my homeboys to get out. You know, I'm my partner Bougie. He uh, he should be out in a month or two. My partner, um, Doink, my partner PK, P, um, Doink in the feds. PK, he he been locked up like seven years on the murder charge. He's supposed to get out in a couple months. I'm just waiting on all these boys to get out, you know? You going to try to stay out of trouble? Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to jail ain't cool. I got to stay out of trouble because every time I go to jail, then they be looking crazy. They don't got nobody to send them no money, so, you know? Yeah, yeah. So you you like to leave. Yeah. I'm, you, you heard what his daddy told daddy him. Daddy told you don't slip. Yeah, and I he's mean. been sticking with that. I yeah. tell you, I went to jail a couple weeks ago. I got caught on the road, but cause of my brother. Now I got, <laughs> I got to put that in the movie. Cause my brother be the main reason why I, I don't went to jail two times. How my big brother? My yeah, big dude. brother got into an incident, and my mama told me. She said, "Get up! I need you to call me cause your brother finna go to jail. They finna impound the car." She was like, "We want you need to drive the other car." We get to the crime scene. The police like, hey, we need your driver's license too so before you can drive the car. And I had a warrant for my arrest since February. Uh-huh. So I went to jail. They transferred me to another jail. I was so mad. I told the police, I said, man, when we got to the jail. I said, put me in on my brother. It's like, why? So he can beat him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but see, I wasn't no inmate of that jail, so they wouldn't put me in. So they sat me in the holding cell until they transferred me. To and it's all going down in Motra? And I, it was Motra. And yeah, I went to jail in Motra, but I had a warrant in another county. Close to Motri. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. So uh, what, do, what do you expect to be like? Like, where do you want this music to take you? And, or the whole movement? I feel like you're a brand. Because yeah. you're looking at all, you're looking at movies, movies you're looking books, at books. You look, I, I like the way, I that, I like the way you're doing that. Because you're not and, just and sticking to the clothing line, right? right? Yeah, and I got clothing line. Clothing line What's the name of the clothing line? Black Hibbets Clothing. Black Hibbets, how long ago did you put start that out? Me and my home, Abu, just started that. Uh, we started about 10 years ago. Dang. But we really just be focusing on we just be focused on making it help us save money. You know, like, we don't wear other people's clothes. We just wear ours. I like that. You know? Well, let me ask but you this. And why that name for that brand? Because my, cause my homeboy, Booja, he's a hippie. He, oh, okay. That's all he do is smoke weed. See, I don't smoke. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when you... when you It was... When he was in prison, and I was taking care of him in prison, and I told him, I said, look, Booja, I said, when you get out this time, I need you to do something legit. I said, bro, I'm going to start you a legit company. I said, bro, come up with a logo. I said, I got the graphic designer. I want you to do something legit. I ain't want my home bus steady going back and forth to prison. And when I first started my career, he was hustling. He was trapping this stuff and investing in me with my music. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it was on the right when he went to prison for hustling that I, when he came home, I gave him, you know what I'm saying, looked out for him. So that's how we started the clothing line because I wanted to give my home bus something legit to do instead of going back to prison. That's cool. But he done got locked up again for the same thing. Mm-hmm. I told him this time that we opened up a store we gonna open. I'm gonna open up a store, so, black hippie store. So you be pressing and all that stuff. You know how to do I press, everything. Yeah, I do. I press. I do all that stuff. I I know how That's to engineer. Dope. I know how to make graphics, logos, 
I have to I to make my own mixtape covers. What you, other category of a brand is there that you have not started doing? Because that you sound like you touched almost. That's every why category. he like independency too. I don't. Well, that's um, why you like being the independent. The movie, the book, the clothes. Like yeah, what yeah, else yeah, is I that? Gotta, I gotta stay in the independent lane because if I go, if I feel like I'm concerned, then you know. They gonna be trying to tell me what to tell do. Tell me what to do. Just like I told you, I did the cowboy song. I just did the country song. I seen that. I like that cowboy song. I said, this nigga trying to sing country. Yeah, I just dropped. Look, me and my homo was in the studio. We was in Miami. We had some girls in there, right? So my cousin, me and him, I don't, me and him, we ain't seeing eye to eye right now. I don't deal with him no more though. And I, I never deal with him again because he got some body. He got some people to do something to my brother. But um, um, we was in the studio with some girl. He was hating on me. So he was like, cuz, you make all your song about the same thing, man. Don't nobody want to hear that. I was like, what? I said, cuz, put on a beat. I'll make country song right now. And that's how you hear it in the beginning of the yeah, song. He yeah. like, I was like, nigga, talking about ain't, nigga, ain't versatile. I, I heard I, that today. And, I, and I, that's how I came up with it. And then I linked up with um one of Kanye West or a film directors. And they, they filmed my video. They did. They did. I mean, it, cost, it cost me a lot of money to do that video. Mm. And I told you, we were filming that video from 8 in the morning to 8 at night. Wow, like I said, the independent grind is That's real, good, and though. you all you speaking on is entrepreneurship. Yeah, and and, yeah. and it's just you dressing it up in a way that comes from our culture, yeah. and a lot of a lot of people can't understand that they are gonna call it hood or ghetto, but it's really entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. really dressed up with with a real good sauce to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I love it, man. I love what you. I love everything that you done pretty much told us about on this platform. Yeah. A lot of young people sit in that seat and can't articulate the craft like you just did. And doing the things that you're doing. No, no, it's dope, bro. And I and, and and that's why I was messing with you earlier too. I want to rock with you. I like you, man. I, <laughs> yeah, I, love I tell you, it. I don't even got no manager. Yeah, got no manager or nothing. You I just out here rocking and rolling, man. Do you have phone. a team? No, no, I mean, everybody locked up. Everybody yeah. locked up. Yeah. Everybody locked up. On, so on you doing everything by yourself? Yeah. I, your I mama, my, your mama helping. That, my mama, she I can't really. Other. She she promote me on Facebook stuff like that, but she can't really promote. I got homeboys in the NFL and stuff, but they can't really promote my music because it was stuff I'm rapping about. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know? But I think you're doing a great job, man. And whatever God it. got for you is coming to you. You ain't got to worry about nothing, man. I, for real. When I be in Miami, I moved to Miami last May. When I got out of jail, I got. In a situation, one of my homeboys I was in prison with, he like, man, three, you need to come. He like, man, you stay getting in trouble in Georgia, man, come to Miami. I told him, I said, man, if you can show me I can make more money in Miami than I make in Georgia, I'll come. That boy paid me $1,000 a day for like six months. Man. Wow. And all I was doing was just watching his back because he got like $250,000 in jewelry and he didn't want nobody to snatch a chain. Wow, see, see the, the game cool. real, real serious out here. And if you ain't, if you ain't living it, you won't think about it. You know man, what I mean? And then I'm tell you how me and him got it. Like me, how me and him came cool. When I was at the prison, I was at, I was at low security prison. I was telling everybody when I get out, I'm going back to school. So he was telling everybody, man, that nigga three, he ain't, he ain't know nothing. That nigga talking about he going back to school when he get out, man, he a schoolboy. So you know how black, well, I ain't gonna say black. You know how negative people is. They they was like they were trying to stir stir stuff up. They trying to make a fight. So I was like, hey, bro, you talking about me? You telling for I'm a school boy, this and that? I called him on the yard and I, I called him out. I'm like, yeah, bro, you, you said this and that. He was like, nah, bro. He was like, bro, I'm a school boy too. So my release date was January the 15th. He was a 17th. He gave me information. I gave him mine. He was like, bro, when we get out, bro, I'm gonna hit you up, bro. I wasn't expecting that. Cause I don't got a lot up. Please the time I gave folks my information. They ain't never hit me up. That's one dude, like I said, I owe him, I can't say I owe him the world, but I owe him a lot because he really changed my life. Me me going to prison and me and him was like the best thing that could ever happen to me, you know? Wow. Man, I like it, man. Like I said, everything that, and, and, and it's just, like I said again, I don't know what you do as far as uh, what he done and how if he rap or what. I don't yeah, know. he rap too. Okay, so he, he got to change. He just don't want to put no music out. Like, you used to look at him. He got a quarter million dollars in jury, but he don't put none of the music out. He got, I got some songs with him though. But other than that, he won't release his music. For sure. Hey man, we hey man, we appreciate you for coming on the show. Yes, we um, appreciate man. Being here. No man, you do great job, great interview, great energy, man. Say man, we love you, brother. Love you too, man. For sure. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.